Today's faculty speaker is Dr. Monica E. Sains. She currently serves as a business and sport management professor in CSU's College of Business. Dr. Sains earned her Bachelor of Arts in Social Science and Journalism from Glenville State College and earned a Master of Sports Sciences in Sport Management and Marketing and a Doctorate of Sport Management in Sport Management in and marketing from the United States Sports Academy. She has been a professor with CSU since 2004. Her previous experience includes positions as a translator, and I think she speaks about what, 28 languages? No, three, I think three or four she's fluent in, but she's a translator, a public school teacher, and a also made seven teaching trips to Vietnam, so you guys know Dr. Sainz really well, right? Please welcome Dr. Monica Sainz. Good morning, parents, distinguished guests, faculty, staff, and graduates. I am honored to welcome you on behalf of the faculty and staff at Columbia Southern University for this 2009 commencement ceremony. First of all, I would like to introduce you uh, to our outstanding academic administrators, one by one, uh, who are present here today. And uh, I will call their names and they will remain standing and then you can uh, hold for applause, please. Uh, Dr. Joe Manjon. Dr. Ryder. Dr. Tamarala Swafford, Dr. Catherine Odom, Professor Kim Clay, Professor Elwyn Jones, Professor Nick Lees, Professor Nicole Gotcho, Dr. Richard Gray, Professor Joel Journey, Professor Schumann Johnson, Mr. Poche Wagaspak, Ms. Tina Ship, Ms. Rachel Ferris, Ms. Harsha Hinnan, Ms. Wendy Troop. You can applaud. <laughs> Thank you. Now let me introduce you to our outstanding colleague faculties. Would you please stand as I call your name and hold um, your applause until all names have been called. Professor Robert Allen, Professor Tim Bourne, Professor Wayne Butts, Dr. Dan Cochran, Dr. Barbara Daniel, Professor Melissa Findlay, Professor Jamie Gauthier, Dr. Jan Hinnan, Dr. David Kerr, Professor Terry Lees, Professor Dan Leslie, Ms. Leslie Lomers, Dr. James Myers, Dr. Judith Myers, Professor James Schindler, Dr. Elizabeth Serapin, Professor Ron Senor, Dr. Karen Smith, Professor Dana Taylor, Professor Cecile Truss, Professor Bill Turnbull, Professor Donnie West, Dr. Larry Williams, and Professor Nicking Young. If you could wave at your students. Thank you. Thank you. As a faculty member for the last five years, I can tell you that we enjoy serving our students every day of the year. 
It gives us great pleasure to work with individuals who chose to enrich their lives, expand their career opportunities, improve the quality of life for their families, and who are looking to make an impact on this world's societies. To the students, I am sure that you enjoyed the online format, the convenience of studying while you pursued your careers and got to spend more time with your families. We will be happy to see you again if you decide to continue your education. As I mentioned, we know our students will make an impact on the world. Education is the key ingredient for our very survival. And as I look upon this assembly, I see students who have come from the four corners of the world. At CSU, we truly have a mini United Nations because each person here learns not only the culture of the United States, but cultures from faraway lands. Each of our students understands the importance of education and how it not only shapes the individual, but society as well. Our students will be the hand that reaches back to help others and who will serve as role models and leaders. We, the faculty and administration at CSU, know that our students understand and respect the support they have received from friends and family. We all know that no person is an island and we cannot climb to great heights without the rope of friendship and the knot of family. We at CSU appreciate the help you have offered the graduates because without it, our task would have been at best difficult. Family and friends are the fabric that holds us together, the very glue that bonds us together. So to all our honored guests, thank you for your support. As faculty members at CSU, we thank you, the students, for enriching our lives with your friendship, your work ethic, and drive to succeed. As I look at our students, I think about the saying, nothing beats a failure but a try. So simple, yet so complex. If you don't try, you will fail automatically. It is a given. You students have tried and you have succeeded in your attempt to achieve a quality education. You are winners, for you know that all great accomplishments begin as a simple dream. Your dream was an education. Now the doors have opened for yet other dreams, other accomplishments. The only thing holding you back is you, and you have exhibited at CSU that nothing can hold you back. You are champion and the shapers of the future, and we are proud to be affiliated with you. Proud that we may have contributed in a small part to helping your dream come true. Again, welcome and congratulations on your wonderful achievement. Thank you. to just take a quick moment. We are a video in this, and uh, we've got a lot of our staff. We have over, as Robert said, over 300 staff. Many are here, and many are back at the office uh, working hard to make dreams come true. So if you'll join in with me, just thanking them for a great job that they do. <laughs> Hello, back home. Okay. Today's student speaker is John Thompson. He is one of 19,000 active students currently enrolled at CSU. Mr. Thompson currently serves as the de Deputy Executive Director and Chief of Staff for the National Sheriff's Association. His public safety career started in 1972 when he joined the Federal Fire Service as a firefighter. He served eight years in the U.S. Army from 1974 to 1982. After his honorable discharge, John continued to work in law enforcement and in 1990 was appointed chief of police for the city of Mount Rainier, a community, a community that borders Washington, D.C. During his tenure as chief of police, Mr. Thompson earned two awards of excellence, recognitions from the Maryland Municipal League, 
In 1998, John was appointed assistant sheriff for Prince George's County, Maryland, where he worked until 2002. Mr. Thompson's earned an associate's degree from Northern Virginia College, is a graduate of the Northwestern University School of Police Staff and Command, and a graduate of the FBI Law Enforcement Executive Development School. Mr. Thompson currently sits on the FBI Criminal Justice Information Advisory Policy Board, the Homeland Security Consortium, and the Department of Homeland Security Emergency Services Sector Coordinating Council, which he also chairs. Please join me in welcoming Mr. John Thompson. Distinguished guests, ladies, gentlemen, family, classmates, and graduates, good morning. It's a great morning. It's the next step. I'm honored to be part of this graduation ceremony as you celebrate your next step and the long road of where you're going to go, and only you know where you're going to go, right? Today represents many years of hard work and sacrifices. I know. I'm with you. Today represents the next step in your life and new challenges you will face. Today, we celebrate your dream. Congratulations. I, yeah, I wrote this speech. I think I'm just going to kind of throw it out the door. I don't know why we stay up all night writing speeches, and then we get up here and we're like, let's just talk about what it's about. I started back in 1972. I didn't want to graduate high school. I didn't want to go to high school. Anybody feel like that? And does that make sense? Twelve years, they're going to let us go to school and do nothing else but go to school, and they're going to pay for it. And mom and dad's going to feed us, and we don't want to go. And then guess what? We get out, and then we work our butts off to get an education. I got my first degree in the 70s. I had to sit in class and sit in class and sit in class, and I found it just wasn't working. When you're working rotational shifts and you're working different days off, that's tough. And I remember in the fire service, we worked 24 hours on, 48 hours off. So there was a lot of time. Just think if we had online training then. Gosh, I wouldn't be here today waiting to fill those seats next year. I'm only a couple classes away, and I'm going to keep going. I'm doing it for satisfaction because I'm pretty much ready to retire and go fishing. But I just think of uh, when I got into service, there was a benefit called the GI Bill. And that's really what kind of persuaded me to go to college. I got to thinking, they're going to give me all this money to go to school? You know, and so that's how it started. And then I realized, you know, this is great. This is good stuff. Everybody always says luck. Does anybody know what luck is? Luck is two things, opportunity and preparation. And ladies and gentlemen, if you get the opportunity and you're not prepared, your luck just went out the door. So guess what? You guys have just prepared. Now the opportunity will come knocking, and you'll be ready for it. I want to leave you with a few things and shorten this. Never lose that fire that you have that got you to this point. Never stop learning, because if you do, someone else is going to pass you by. Finally, share your accomplishments and share your fire with your fellow people, with your family, with your friends, with people who are struggling. Because when it's all over, said and done, it doesn't make any difference how much money we have. It doesn't make any difference how many buildings we have. It doesn't make any difference really what we have. If you haven't touched someone's life, if you haven't done one thing, one thing to make somebody's life better, you pretty much wasted your life. So go out there, take that fire, and spread the word. You're really lucky. We're all lucky, especially the older ones like me, a few people, that we have that opportunity now that we can take online courses and get a decent education without having to go sit in the classroom. But that's tough for some of us. It really is. Heck, it's tough to sit in front of a computer and get it done, isn't it, guys, ladies? We know. I'm going to leave you with a couple words that I, that I saw from a doctor. Everybody know Dr. Seuss? This is what he said. You have the brains in your head. You have the feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what you know. You are the only one who will decide where you'll go. God bless. Thank you.
you, John. We are honored today to have with us today Dennis L. Rubin, Chief of Fire and Emergency Medical Services Department for the District of Columbia. Chief Rubin was named as Mayor Adrian Fenty's top choice in March of 2007. Chief Rubin is now responsible for the management and supervision of more than 2,000 employees and an annual operating budget in excess of $170 million. His agency is the nation's first responder, responsible for safeguarding the U.S. Capitol, the White House, and other precious landmarks. Prior to his nomination, Chief Rubin was chief of the Atlanta Fire Department, I'm sorry, Atlanta Fire and Rescue Department, which had 1,150 employees. Chief Rubin's experience in fire and rescue service spans more than 35 years. He has been a line firefighter, company grade officer, and command level officer in several major fire departments, including Washington, D.C. and Norfolk, Virginia. In 1994, he served as the president of the State Fire Chiefs Association of Virginia. Chief Rubin was the host fire chief for the 1999 Southeastern Fire Chief Dothan, Alabama. He currently serves on several committees with the International Association of Fire Chiefs, including a two-year term as the Health and Safety Committee Chair. Please join me in welcoming Chief Dennis L. Rubin. Thank you, sir, for that very, very kind introduction to our President Robert Mays, to Admiral Howling, to the family and friends of the graduates, and most importantly, to the graduates, welcome and tremendous congratulations on a spectacular day today. Yes? That's always the toughest part, getting that opening out of the way. Now we can roll just a, a little bit easier. I hope I got everybody's name right. But with that said, before I get to my, my prepared remarks, and the president said that I could keep them under 90 minutes, that would be nice, so I'm going to try to do that. I hope the location hasn't uh, slipped away from you. Having an opportunity to be in such an American treasure as this museum and understanding perhaps the only reason why we're able to be here is the freedoms that we enjoy as citizens of this nation under the great watch of the Admiral and all the other military folks that are on watch and at war now. And I would ask that we acknowledge everyone in the military and particularly those at sea in light of the building that we're in. a chance to sit in your chairs a few years ago, maybe a little bit longer, and of course I'm speaking to the graduates, and I tried to remember and think back to those commencement speakers and the responsibility that they had on my special day, and I thought, what incredible messages did they send me out into the world with? And then I realized I couldn't remember who they were. So I'm hoping to take some very important points, and some of which have been slightly touched upon as you walk out today as food for thought about where you'll go for tomorrow. I'm sorry the sheriff had to leave. He's still here. I hope he can hear me, because this is for him. I did stay up late last night, and he did promise to tease me, but I just have to get this one out of the way. And that is when my son got back from the first Persian Gulf War. I'm very proud. proud. He was a sailor, LSD-45, the Comstock out of San Diego. He took the exact same test that I had taken 30 years earlier to become a District of Columbia protector, whether it was for the fire department or police department or emergency medical services. And of course, was the public safety civil service exam. I'm saddened to say that he flunked. That's right, Sheriff, he's a cop today. <laughs> In fact, he works for the U.S. Secret Service, and 
I couldn't be any prouder of my son, but the sheriff assured me that he'd be beating me up a little bit, but uh, all in good fun and, and all in the spirit of public safety. But with that said, I'm hoping I can leave you with five points to remember. And something tells me that you're well aware of each of these points and know them really well, but I'm going to give you my perspective, and I hope it's something that you can take away again and think about later. It would be my goal today that 10 or 20 or 30 years you can remember the commencement comments, maybe not the person, but the thoughts. The first thought that I want to leave you with is that be a lifelong learner. I think Admiral Howling hit on it just a bit, but by being adult learners, and it looks like you all are, it's incredibly important to stay on top of your game. I think if Stephen Covey was here, you'd be paying about eh, 15000 20000 for his speech, just teasing. I think he would tell you to always remember to sharpen the saw. And it may not be the next degree, although I hope and pray with you that it is. It may be something dealing with your profession. It may be something to improve the quality of your family life. It may be something for pure enjoyment. But never lose sight of the fact that you should be in a position to continue to chase after truth, after knowledge, and after information for as long as you can. The next one, I'm going to sound a bit like a real estate salesman, but instead of location, 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 I'm going to ask you to think about communications, communications, communications. What a kind introduction I received. The fact of the matter is there are 2,300 employees that work in 40 different locations, and firefighters have figured out that if you work a day, you're off for three days. Pretty neat deal. You know, you can have other jobs and pursue other education. And the point being, in our agency, to communicate across all those barriers is difficult at best. And I appreciate I'm giving you this information couched as a firefighter, but I want you to think about it in all phases of your work, and that's right, in your family as well. My son that I described earlier, one of my best friends, as we got close to 1990, he was graduating from high school. And the story goes something like this. He says, Dad, you know in May I'm graduating, and my immediate retort was, yes, you are and you'll be looking for work and a new place to live. <laughs> Little did I know he'd be going off to war and I'd be scared to death, but, but everything worked out just fine. But in that instant that he was describing boastfully about becoming a high school graduate, he asked me in the most sincerest and respectful way, would I buy him a vehicle? Without a doubt, I said yes. And in that instant, my son, my flesh, my blood, was convinced it would be a Maserati or perhaps it would be a Porsche. You know, a Ferrari would be nice, Dad, and if he had his way some 19 years later, I would still be making payments. <laughs> I assure you, my focus was on that family Volkswagen. A little paint, a couple of new tires, and some brakes. And the point of my story is, it's so difficult to have perfect communications between two human beings. And if you don't believe me, ask the folks out there that are married. And communications, whether it's at work, whether it's at your home, whether it's at the places of where you worship, or any other areas of responsibility is going to be a big deal. The third bullet point that I would leave you with is never forget that someone is watching. In our terms, we are so highly scrutinized today. We'll fight a fire or provide medical care. It'll be videotaped by six people, reviewed by 17 specialists, and it'll be dissected for months. Your chosen occupations may not be that scrutinized, but I assure you, 
each and every one of you that someone is always watching. There's a pretty interesting book. That's right, sometimes I can get the books that don't require crayons. That General Colin Powell wrote called My American Journey. And I would urge you to grab a copy, and in one of the chapters, the general describes the fact of going back to the neighborhood that he grew up in. That was on Long Island, New York. He was the first generation in his family to be born on American soil. And he described where he lived as Banana Kelly. It was Kelly Street. It was a cul-de-sac. And by now, you figured it out. It was shaped like a banana. On one end was the Powell home. And on the other was a grocery store that he had worked in throughout his high school years. And when he went back to the grocer some 25, 30 years later, with all of the decorations and high ranking and actually even a secretary above the senior military leader of our nation, he asked the storekeep who then went on to say Colin, and I'm thinking, who could call a four-star general Colin? But I suspect it would be a man that had employed him 30 years earlier. He described how carefully he watched the general as a 10th grader working in his store. And he said, when you would stock the shelves or sweep the floors, or when you would take the trash out, I watched you like a hawk. He said, I had employed younger people before that would take goods, put them in the trash, take good products out of the store, come back and steal me blind later. And he says, General Powell, you were always on time. You always did your job well. You always made me proud. And then he went on to say, when you were a junior in high school, I let you do something that no one else hardly ever got to do, and that was to manage the cash register, to put your hand in our family till where we rely on earning a living. And once again, I watched you so closely that first year, but twice as close the second. And he said, General Powell, you may have forgotten, but you ran that store for several weeks while my family had a vacation in your senior year. And interestingly enough, in the book, the general goes on to describe what it was like in the 60s at West Point in Vietnam as a first lieutenant and then later in his career. And at every point he describes, you've guessed it, someone was always watching, someone was in the background, and I'm begging you, to lead both your professional life and personal lives in a way that you can become a Columbia Southern University role model. Keep your priorities straight as my next bullet point and move straight ahead. Make sure that you don't forget your family, that you don't forget your faith. Things happen so quickly nowadays and so rapidly, it's easy, very easy, to forget what's important. And I hope that you take a moment out to remember that your family and friends should come first, your fitness, both at work and your physical fitness, and your financial conditions. That's right, those are the four Fs, are always well taken care of. The last thought, the fifth thought that it's my honor to share with you from my perspective is a pretty simple one, but it's also a pretty important one and that is to relax and to enjoy. Not just the day, but the rest of your life. Let me refer back to General Colin Powell's book because he calls it My American Journey. And throughout the book, not only does he talk about somebody watching, but how important it is to recognize life is a journey, it is not a destination, and enjoy it at every chance you get. God bless you. What a great day it is for each and one of you. I cannot tell you how proud I am of you personally, and I'll be back in 30 years to give you the quiz. All right, thank you so much. Vice President.
president of Columbia Southern University and by approval of your faculty and with the legal authority of the state of Alabama, I hereby confer upon you the master's degree and all the rights and privileges that go with it. You are now graduates, alumni of Columbia Southern University. I congratulate you. You can now move your tassels to the left side where they'll forever remain as a symbol of your achievement. Would you now please come forward and be recognized? Denisha Little. Kenneth Fan. Kenyetta Balden. Daniel Miller. Mark Effen. Alejandro A. Ramos. Nicole Kelly. Judith Miller. Jeffrey Dennis. Alan Lunay. Larry Knight. Rebecca Smith. Todd Weedman. Jeffrey Jackson. Dallas A. Rosado. Lowell Shank. David Parshley. John F. Bozer. Shanae Talley. Feel free to clap as the graduates cross the stage. Mary Sheila Ebery. Lisa Johnson. Richard N. Johnson. Cardell Ellis. Cynthia L. Wallace. Linda Rogers, Catherine Gray, Don 
Bush. Christopher Klein Joseph A. Penna Paul Robinson Tommy Clark Cedric Davis MacArthur Thomas Ingrani Banerjee Teresa Yell Judy Walls Claude Dalrymple Jr. Rosalyn Horn James W. Bain Diana Etchard Mary Thompson Crystal Large Keith Janowski Vanessa J. Flowers David Perez Thomas Gephardt Anthony B. Bryant Vanita Thomas Andy Menefee <laughs> Levi Maynard George Curtis Pamela L. Murphy Christopher Burkett Crystal Brown Natasha Arnold Charles Childress (laughs) 
Terry L. McDuffie. Richard Ortiz. Alfred Stanko. Renetta Pickens Ware, <laughs> Timothy G. Crowley, <laughs> Kashika M. Butler. Travis G. Smith. Chastity S. Winter. Sean Washington. Mr. Tuan Tan To. Ms. T. Tuya Nyong Kwak. Mr. Tu Hong Nguyen. Miss Nyat Nam Phong Nguyen. Miss Nguyen Tu An. Ms. Tuan and Ti Huang. Ms. Nyuk Mai Fung Fan. Mr. Te V. Long. Ms. Hong Jiang Le. Ms. Tu Hien Tran. Tito Neutron. <laughs> Ms. 
Mr. An Chung Nguyen. Mr. Kui Kan Nyo. Ms. Thuy Loan Le. Ms. Thi Tien Kim Le. Mr. Tien Luen Nguyen. Ms. Thi Mun Chuk Thai. And Mr. Kung Dang Nguyen. Candidates for bachelor's degree, please rise. As the uh, vice president of academics for Columbia Southern University, and with approval of your faculty and by the legal authority of the state of Alabama, I hereby confer upon you the bachelor's degree and all the rights and privileges now graduates and alumni of Columbia Southern University I congratulate you your tassels can now be moved to the left to show the symbol of your great achievement Please come forth and be recognized. Roberts, cum laude. Akita Maxwell, magna cum laude. Addis Ainsley. Kenneth Wallace, cum laude. Julio Rodarte, cum laude. Lauren Later. Daniel Huff.
Stephen Smith, summa cum laude. Troy Boxton. Joyce Banks. Robert Barano, cum laude. Brenda Somerville, cum laude. Victor Bertrand. Sebastian Taylor, cum laude. Scott Bowser, cum laude. Sterling P. Dunn, Jr., summa cum laude. Christopher Armstrong, cum laude. Angela Bethel. Angela Brosard, magna cum laude. Albert K. Mensa, cum laude. Wesley Clark, magna cum laude. <laughs> Stephanie M. Kalam, cum laude. Schmidt, summa cum laude. Sarah Hall, summa cum laude. Jennifer Siganero. John Johnston. <laughs> Kelly Foy. George Spinks. Charles Stevens. <laughs> Therese Patterson, magna cum laude. Jack Anderson, cum laude. Julian Kelman, cum laude. Abigail H. Hutchinson. Howard Prince, magna cum laude. Laura J. Sullivan, cum laude. Stephen R. Sullivan, cum laude.
Cedric Jenkins. Don Drayton. Jose Pohl. Magna Cum Laude. David Stazel, summa cum laude. Randy Franklin, cum laude. Caden Jones, cum laude. Patricia Nocek, magna cum laude. Anthony DeFondi, magna cum laude. Malik Taylor, cum laude. Clinton Gamble, cum laude. Kathy R. Trahan. Cynthia Warner, magna cum laude. Melvin Spence. James May, cum laude. Tracy A. Bivens. Anthony Hannon, cum laude. Romario D. Johnson, magna cum laude. Mary England, magna cum laude. Kofi Wallace, cum laude. John Allison, magna cum laude. <laughs> Donna Newman, cum laude. Stephanie Miller, cum laude. Dewey Hansford, magna cum laude. Tamara Madrill. Amy LeBounty. Michael W. Pruitt, cum laude. <laughs> Melissa Franks. Julio Menendez, cum laude. Carla 
John Taylor Mallory, magna cum laude. Sherry Anderson, magna cum laude. Richard Brown, magna cum laude. Mark Bush, cum laude. Chris Hubbard, cum laude. Jervis McCoy. Aziz Olanawaju. Jovan Laura, magna cum laude. Madeline Diaz Robles. Bruce A. Buchanan, cum laude. Lawrence Anderson. Johanna Kennedy, cum laude. <laughs> Patrick Bishop. Pharaoh Bubba Diaz, cum laude. Diane Macbeth, summa cum laude. Michael Roberts. Emmanuel Henry, magna cum laude. Eric Davidson. Danny Johnson, magna cum laude. Mark L. Livingston, magna cum laude. Fanny Robertson. Leo Hendricks, Jr., magna cum laude. Danny Dean, cum laude. Warren C. Williams, summa cum laude. Gail Lapout, summa cum laude. Darren Blackwell. Elisa Waller, cum laude. David Cervantes. Joe Beth Burnett.
Tanya M. Corner, magna cum laude. John Michael Axel, cum laude. Timmy Harry Darko. George Darko, magna cum laude. Daniel Wilkerson, magna cum laude. Garrett Menzies. <laughs> Jeffrey Stubbs, summa cum laude. Robert Antoine. Aaron Lasnick. Sharon Reese, cum laude. Vaughn Porter, magna cum laude. Robert Halen, summa cum laude. <laughs> Todd Hopkins. Roderick D. Lowe, summa cum laude. Sherry Clem. Romeo Brown, cum laude. Andre Brooks, Darren Lewis, Candidates for associate degree, please rise. <clears throat> As the uh, Vice President of Academics for Columbia Southern University, upon the approval of your faculty and with the legal authority granted by the state of Alabama, I hereby confer upon you the associate degree and all the rights and privileges that go with it. You are now graduates and alumni of Columbia Southern University. I congratulate you. You can now move your tassels to the left side where they forever will show this great achievement. Please come forth and be recognized.
Rossanne Niles. <laughs> Kathy Cole. Chetta R. Honor. Simeon D. Honor. Ashley Cook. Crystal Humphrey. Eric Demata. Leanne Smythe. Ebony Headley. Terry Dyer. Astrid Tucker. Jeffrey Allen Sapp. <laughs> all right, let's let's all give our graduates another great round of applause. Way to go, graduates. Woohoo! Um, at this time, I would like to ask Reverend Buford Lipscomb to bring our benediction. Let us pray in closing. Father, we are so thankful for this day and all that it represents in the lives of these graduates. Lord, we congratulate them on this day of great accomplishment and achievement. Lord, their diligence, their discipline, Lord, has paid off with their perseverance. We pray, Lord, as they go from this point and place today, that you will direct them from the place that they go back to, these states, uh, across our union and nations around the world. Lord, that you would cause them to find that place and that purpose that you have birthed them for in this, this day and this time. Lord, we pray, God, that their motivation would not be simply to make money, but to make a mark on those around them, that they would find your dream for them and follow it fully. We celebrate this great moment in their lives and pray your blessing to be upon each one of them as they go forth. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, one one final announcement. This is the end of our ceremony. Congratulations to all the graduates for completing your studies and earning your degree at CSU. Everyone here is invited to attend the commencement reception that will be located at the Officers Club. As you exit the museum, take a left, go 1.1 miles, and the club will be on your right. Now I want to welcome all you graduates to participate in the grand old tradition. If you're brave enough, come on graduates, stand up. Come on, let's all participate in the tossing of your caps in the air and celebration of your great accomplishment. Ready? One, two, three, go! 
I do hereby declare this 2009 commencement ceremony to be closed.